We were camped on the plains at the head of the Cimarron. Along come a stranger and he stopped to argue some. He hadn't had his breakfast so he handed him a plate and stood around a listening while the stranger talked and ate. Now he talked a mile a minute, his thoughts just came in herds. He astonished all his punches with his educated words. He talked about old Shakespeare while he downed his pork and beans. And while he ate his biscuits, it was for him kings and queens. Now he drank a cup of coffee, but he never missed a word. Such a lot of education us punchers never heard. He looked so awful foolish, we begin to look around to see what sort of a joke to play on this tenderfoot from town. Now he told us he had lost his job upon the 70. Was striking out to hit the trail upon the Santa Fe. He didn't say how come it, just some trouble with the boss. But he asked if he could borrow a nice fat saddle horse. Well, this just tickled all the boys to death. We laughed right up our sleeves. You can have as fine a horse as fine as ever you please. Shorty took his lariat to rope the zebra done and get the saddle on him while we waited for the fun. Now old Dunny was an outlaw. He'd grown so awful wild. He could paw the moon down. He could jump a mile. But now he stood there quiet, just as if he didn't know how we got the saddle on him when we was awaiting for the show. Now when the strangers hit the saddle, then old Dunny quit the earth, traveling straight up skyward for all that he was a worth. Kicking and a squealing and a throwing wall eyed fits, his hind feet perpendicular and his front feet in the bits. We could see the tops of mountains under Dunny at every jump. But the stranger sat upon him like a camel's hump. The stranger sat upon him and he twirled his black mustache just like the summer border sits while awaiting for the hash. Well, he kicked him in the haunches and he spurred him as he whirled. And he shouted to us, punchers, I'm the wolf of the world. Before he had dismounted and he stood upon the ground, we knew that he was a thoroughbred and not a gent from town. <laughs> now the boss, he'd been standing there watching the whole show, walked right up to the stranger and he said, you needn't go. Said, if you can throw the lariat like you rope the zebra done, you're the man that I've been looking for since the year of one. Now it's the one thing, a sure thing I learned since I've been born. Every educated feller ain't a plum green horn.